All right, happy Saturday to you all. I am headed out this morning for a uh, breakfast meetup with uh, one of my buddies and a uh, channel subscriber uh, that is uh, wanting to go over to my warehouse and get some of those spare monitors and take a look at the IT equipment that I've got there to liquidate. Uh, anyway, um, I decided to take the Riker uh, today because the battery is a little bit low on it. It hasn't been exercised enough in recent history to uh, keep itself healthy. So, uh, run it around and then potentially, depending on how my day goes, uh, as I get done at the warehouse and toward the middle of town and I head back out this way, I'm going to take this over to uh, a couple of uh, motorcycle dealers out here on this side of town and have them do a uh, quick appraisal, tell me what kind of money they're going to offer, and sell this off, trade it off. If it goes away this weekend, that's fine. It won't hurt my feelings too much. Probably need to take my uh, youngest daughter for another ride on it, though, before it disappears. <laughs> she likes this thing. She really gets a kick out of it. I didn't put my windscreen back on here, but uh, I'll do that later. I got most of the pictures that I need. Uh, today, the weather's clear and hot and sunny as usual so uh, I'm gonna line this thing up in the driveway and take a whole bunch of pictures of it uh, with the accessories the different stuff that's gonna be included and all that and uh, advertise it uh, assuming I don't just get a fantastic offer from one of the motorcycle dealers when I roll by there uh, the one dealer that I want to stop at is, I, for some reason I cannot remember the name of it Freedom Motorsports or uh, it's not Iron Supply whatever it is it's a, a, I feel like a tool I can't remember anyway it's out here uh, just on the edge of uh, Katy on uh, Old Highway 90 and uh, they are a Royal Enfield Triumph and something else dealer and uh, uh, you might want to stop before the uh, intersection there Cheese Dick um, the uh, <laughs> already backwards on my controls. Uh, I want to look at some of the Royal Enfields. Uh, I really want to sit down on the little Hunter 350 if they have one and the Scram 411 because I've been looking hard at those. It'd be something new and interesting to uh, put into my riding repertoire. Uh, I've not, uh, I've not ridden any Royal Enfields ever. Uh, I've never had any exposure to them. Uh, I've sat on them a few times, but I've never ridden them. And uh, I was considering getting the uh, Himalayan or Himalayan. But when I was really looking at it hard was early in the game when they had just released them. And they were having a lot of problems with uh, the clutches and the transmissions holding up. And I shied away from them and then just never really rekindled the interest, I guess. Uh, the other issue is they're pretty heavy for what they are, and I just couldn't see the the benefit or the the, the radical upgrade or you know change in uh, what I've already got, which is the XT250. So if it was going to have more power, more you know something more off-roady, whatever, uh, it would have to be significantly different from the uh, from the XT250 to uh, be worth the upgrade, I would think. So I don't think it would be that radically different. <clears throat> and I don't really care for the looks of the Himalayan for some reason, it just, I don't know. It looks like everything, the crash guards and the headlight uh, setup and all that, it looks like it was an afterthought. Uh, it's very agricultural looking. I just, I don't know, I, I, the look of it doesn't appeal to me. But the uh, Scram 411, which is based roughly on the same bike, uh, I think it's the same frame, same engine, same everything, uh, is missing a lot of those tacked on bits. It's less tacky. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's what I was looking at. Could be interesting. And then, of course, I'll stop at Wild West on the way back through coming toward home and uh, have them give me an in-person appraisal. Uh, I talked to one of the guys on the phone two weeks ago, 
week and a half, yeah, but two weeks ago. And he said uh, that they're probably looking at uh, 6,000. They might be able to do 6,500. That's pretty low uh, considering the, uh, the private party value on this thing is almost 8,000. So that means there's a almost $2,000 spread. Uh, I don't mind the dealer making a little bit of money, but you know, two grand, we're talking 25% of the retail value. They're screwing me. It's a little much. And of course, if I go with a dealer, then I'm definitely taking off this Elka suspension and a lot of the add-on toys because they're not going to give me anything for those add-ons. It's just lost money. Urban cruise missile has been launched. I just wish I could have sorted out the steering on this thing where it's not always darting rapidly side to side. It would have been just great. I could have lived with all of its other faults, fuel economy and you know, other stuff, but the Can-Am warranty being as sketchy as it is, the CVT when it blew up, that just that was the final straw for me. I was so pissed off. Like, really? That's obviously a manufacturing defect and you fuckers won't fix it? That's just wrong, man. That is just wrong. Oh, it's a wear item. And they've been telling a lot of owners the same thing when it comes to uh, the erratic handling and the steering angle sensor and the, uh, you know, the tie rods slacking and all that. They say, oh, it's uh, user damage, it's road damage, and we don't cover road damage. What are you talking about, man? Go over a fucking pothole and it throws the thing, you know, bends something or breaks something. Oh, that means it's not engineered to a high enough standard. It's not robust enough to handle daily city riding. Come on. We're not riding these things on tracks that are perfectly manicured with perfect pavement. <laughs> Give me a break. Set my hillbilly cruise control here. <laughs> That's a... One of my best mods that I made to this thing <laughs> right away because you can't let off the throttle on the Riker without it just nose diving and instantly slowing down. I mean, radically slowing down, like you nail the brakes. So you can never release your hand for a second or, you know, scratch your nose or whatever. Uh, so I put that uh, Go Cruise on there and a little chunk of heater hose so it would hit the handguard. Beautiful, man. Not even 20 bucks. Is it as good as a. Uh, electronic cruise control that maintains speed no but yeah come on 20 bucks beauty redneck engineering man get her done Rocking and rolling side to side, shimmying all over the road. I'm barely touching one bar. Everybody always, you know, in the early days when I was riding this a lot and complaining about this constant darting, you can see how much I'm getting jockeyed side to side. People are saying, no, it's you. You're putting bias on the bars. Blah, 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 blah. I'll blow it out your ass. Armchair quarterbacks can go fuck themselves been riding all my life, been riding, racing, everything with wheels. I know when something is misbehaving and I'm not making up shit. I just can't believe that it wasn't able to be tracked down, you know, I figured, okay, it's, it's going to be an easy fix. You, you fix a tie rod in, you fix a ball joint, a control arm, something is off, you know, something's got slack in it that's allowing the, the steering geometry to change and I'm pretty sure it's this right wheel, it's always been the right side. Uh, but yeah, warranty wouldn't cover it. Dealers couldn't find it. Couldn't cover it. You know, they they have to charge for their time and parts, especially if the manufacturer is not going to reimburse them. So, I mean, they've got their hands tied. I totally understand. So it's up to Can Am to step up and fix the problem. And if they had fixed it for me, they would have found a lot of the problems for other Riker owners. And that just would have been good business. It would have been proactive 
repair on a new product. They would have made a happy customer and I would have been very vocal about it. Even more vocal than the negative stuff that I've said about this. Uh, and it would have given them uh, a better test bed, let's say. And I've always said that about the Riker since day one, uh, probably go back when some of my earliest vlogs where I was talking about this. I don't think they ever had a USA focus group on the Riker. Uh, this was developed in, you know, wherever, Canada or wherever they did their, uh, their design and testing. And the first ones that we ever got here were the production models. And I think if they had subjected this to a USA focus group with our roads, our riding habits, our road conditions, stuff like that, they would have gotten better input for this market, for sure. Uh, and I say that for myself, selfishly, because I put a lot of miles down on a lot of different machines. So I've got a very wide experience, a good breadth of knowledge on different riding modes and styles. And I could have pointed out a few things to them about US consumers and you know our riding and commuting habits and stuff like that, that would have made a better machine for them and for everybody. Uh, you know, again, not overstating my importance in the, the overall scheme of things. I have no delusions of grandeur, but I do have a lot of experience and a handful of the things that really pissed off new owners or alienated potential owners of the Riker were usability issues and, you know, just common sense stuff. Like, there's no way to lock this thing up from the factory. They included the options for it, but they made it an option that wasn't even available for almost a year. And that's the keyed lock over here on the parking brake. Come on, give me a break, man. Literally, give me a break that locks the vehicle. Because anybody can walk up to this thing if they know how to operate it even just a little bit. They flip that parking brake lock down and they can push the bike away. They can roll away with it. There's no steering lock, nothing like that. Or, you know, a traditional motorcycle, yeah, you could walk away with it. But if somebody locks the column, then you're stuck pushing it in circles or... Uh, at least lifting it up and carrying it away, something like that. This thing is heavy enough, you're not going to lift it up and carry it away at 600 and something pounds. So, give a little bit better ability to secure this thing. Give me a break. And then the accessory, you know, no locking front trunk lid, but the lock mechanism has it built in. It has the option to secure it. Why not just include that, man? Four-way flashers, four-way hazards. Why not include it? The other markets did. How much can it possibly cost? Ten bucks? Give me a break, man. All of this is a switch that ties into the CAN bus. So a lot of those silly little things that they omitted from the U.S. model were just penny-wise pound foolish. It was just stupid, stupid marketing and, uh, you know, bean counter issues. Actuarial Sciences got their hands in it and fucked it up. They could have done just a few things and made it so much better, but no. And the accessories, I mean, like, you know, passenger seat, $700, but there's no way to lock it onto the bike. Come on, man. Pull your head out of your ass, think it through. So I've considered getting an F3S, the Sport, uh, but I talked about that in the previous vlog. I don't know if that got published. I don't know if this one will be published, <laughs> maybe on the Quasi Raw channel. Uh, check out my new channel that I, I started. I haven't uploaded much content to it yet, but more is coming, trust me. Uh, Quasi Raw. All together, one word, no spaces. Q-U-A-S-I-R-A-W. That'll just be raw, uncensored stuff. Less editing for me, really. Less time sitting at the, the bench, polishing it up, making it pretty adding bleeps to cover my f-bombs stuff like that just put it out there if they like it they like it if they don't change the fucking channel anyway um, i thought about getting an f3 but with can-am's track record for customer service and warranty claims and everything else nah, i don't know it's a shame. I mean, it, it is such a shame because the machine is mechanically sound. The engines are just fantastic in these things. I love them. Uh, and there are Riker owners out there that have got 60 and 80 and 100,000 miles on these Rikers. That's awesome, man. I mean, that's a huge testament to the driveline 
stability and uh, longevity on these things. That's just amazing. So the fact that their quality control is so bad and you know they've gotten a bad reputation for warranty claims and the customer service and all that, it puts off new buyers or you know eliminates what would have been return buyers, loyal customers. Talk about slitting your throat, come on. Just go the extra mile at the beginning, do it right, and if you've got any problems, fess up to it and fucking fix it. Just fix it. Don't dance around it. Don't get all liability and bean counter infused and, oh, well, let's just wait. Oh, I'm gonna get off here. I was gonna go down to my normal spot, I forgot. Uh, just take care of the issue and get the right impression in your customer's eyes that you're responsible, that you're proactive and you are actually interested in their safety <laughs> because safety just seems like a very distant afterthought if it was even a thought at all uh, when it comes to the Riker. The stability controls on this thing are fantastic, so whoever did the engineering on that, kudos, man. This thing is awesome as far as stability, but the rest of it, from a corporate standpoint and the fact that they don't... Uh, don't even let owners know that their wheels might fall off or you know you might get a vss fault because they forgot to secure the wiring harnesses in the fender good luck sorry about that tough shit hope you don't get run over oh if your fuel pump fails in traffic yeah we knew about it but yeah we didn't uh we ran the numbers and the numbers said now we got to wait for it to fail and then we'll fix it if you live through it hey great we might fix it for you fucking assholes trust this guy. The car is beat to shit. I always look for cars with lots of road tattoos on them and stay away. That means they're no stranger to dipshit moves. This right wheel is still a little bit out of balance too. Yeah, this thing's uh, alignment issues were the nail in the coffin. If I could have gotten that fixed, I would have been uh, glad to keep it for a long time. It's a lot of fun to ride when it's not going where you don't point it. The other Rikers that I've ridden, I rode one that kind of handled almost as badly as mine. I'm trying to think of how many I've ridden now. I've ridden uh, about a dozen different Rikers, uh, 600s and 900s and rallies and non-rallies and you know all flavors. Uh, but one of the other rallies that I uh, rode was almost as bad as this one, not quite as bad. Uh, and then one of the uh, 900s that I rode was fairly bad, but again, nothing like this. Uh, all the others handled fantastically, man. They tracked straight. I mean, yeah, if you get on an off camber or something, they're gonna pull a little bit, but it's not a rapid dart to the side like this one is doing. And then immediately back to the other side, you know, wah, 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 wah. it's called bump steer. Uh, so they, they tracked so well, like Kevin's Riker, uh, bikes and pizza. I rode his uh, early on and I rode uh, Tom's up there. Thomas. Uh, they handled so well. I was like, holy crap, that's that's what I want. That's what my Riker should feel like. I want that. And they both had Elka suspension on their bikes. And I thought, okay, so Elka, that's the magic bullet. I'm going to get the Elka suspension. Spent 2200 bucks on this uh, suspension. Same shit. 
no change. Well, I mean, the, these are obviously much better damped. I mean, they're great shocks, but it didn't fix the, the handling nonsense. And I mean, that just stands to reason, but I thought, okay, if it's the front end chattering, you know, bouncing around and not staying attached to the pavement, well, yeah, it's gonna dance around. So let's, let's control those front wheels better. Let's get some damping in there, some adjustable damping. So I can dial it into my weight. And really, I thought that's what a lot of it was because I'm a lightweight rider. You know, I'm 155 pounds, 170 loaded up with all my crap. So when other people would ride it and they would notice that it, it handled a little bit funky, but not as bad as it's doing for me. They said, you know, yeah, it, it, it's moving around, but I don't see it jockeying side to side like when, in your videos. Uh, so I thought it was the weight issue, and I'm sure that still is part of it, because I'm not settling the suspension, so it's sitting up at a higher ride height with me sitting on it than it would with somebody that weighs 220 pounds. So I thought, all right, well, fine, I'll get some adjustable suspension, I'll get it dialed in for me, and that'll get it at the right ride height to where it's less, like right here, it's trying to go into that damn truck. Uh, try to get it to where it's less flighty. Nope, no joy. Oh well, water under the bridge. It's just disappointing. See ya. Oh, go, go, go. Go, go, go. Find that little pedal. It's the thin one on the right. Oh, look at that timing. Nice. You made it. Bumpity bump bump. Nice front row. Curbside pickup. To go. It's to going. It's to going in my belly. Get in my belly. Do, do, do. Yeah, good enough. Okay. Well, made it to breakfast in one piece. Didn't end up in the, uh, underneath any semis. Almost. Not quite. Food time. All right, everybody. Breakfast is done, and uh, I'm uh, joined now by one of my YouTube subscribers, Frank. Uh, he uh, rolled up this morning on uh, his XR150L. We're going to go over to uh, my warehouse, and he's going to take one of those giveaway monitors that I'm uh, getting rid of. I'm going to be interested to see how he straps it on the uh, bike or his back or something. <laughs> I told him I've got a couple of uh, those uh, motorcycle bungee nets that uh, he could borrow. So we'll see. Uh, Yeah, so I'll take this thing home later today and uh, put it in the middle of the driveway and surround it with all the accessories on the pavement. Show some pictures with it loaded up with the accessories, back to naked, and all the, uh, all the swag around it that I'm selling with it. And see if I can get a good bite. I'd like to get 8,000 out of it. You know, it's worth more than that with all the accessories, but realistic, I think I should be able to get somewhere between 7,800 and, you know, 8,000, somewhere in that ballpark. And if I don't find anybody uh, that wants to nibble on the hook, then uh, I'll trade it at one of the dealers. If I had thought ahead, I should have just put a uh, deposit on that Kawasaki Eliminator 450 when I was there at Wild West a couple weeks ago. I really like that bike. That's pretty slick. Just put a deposit on it so they couldn't sell it out from under me. And uh, if I don't get any other hits on this thing, then I could have just traded straight across, I'm sure. 
save some money on taxes too because you don't pay taxes uh, on the difference when you do a trade like that. So Frank was saying that he's got uh, several bikes and he has a Himalayan as well. I told him that I was thinking about going over to that dealer in Katy and he said, yeah, the name is Iron Supply. So I had it right in my head. I just couldn't quite remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to flag him, letting him know that manhole cover sucks. <laughs> um, so he said that he purchased his Himalayan like, I don't know, just a couple months before the Scram 411 was announced to be released here. And uh, he's already done mods on his, took down the, some of the stuff on the front of it, he said, to where it looks a little bit more like the Scram. So, <laughs> great minds think alike. I'm going to try to corrupt him, uh, get him into moto camping. He said he's never done any moto camping. Like, Hell, man, I go out and do that stuff all the time drop of a hat so maybe I can convince him to do a weekender or something like that he and his uh, buddies uh, he's got the uh, XR 150 and uh, his buddy's got a t-dub so maybe I can uh, interest them in going out and doing some moto camping find some more local buddies to ride and camp with Spicy car, oh, likey, oh man, it's got that thing slammed to the weeds, looks good. That's an expensive toy. Obviously not that smart, but you know, whatever. I'll bet it's kind of weird for Frank riding my normal route that I take so often. I missed that. I was wincing, thinking I was going to hit that pothole. I missed it <laughs> barely. <laughs> yeah, so if he's watched my videos for very long, he knows this uh, inbound commute routine. It's like, oh yeah, I see it in person now. <laughs> We have arrived. I'm gonna show off my nasty, uh, dirty storage unit here to Frank and get a monitor out of there for him. Key, start, run, start. Yeah. It looks like a dirt bike. I mean, the, all the controls are dirt bikey. Cool. There you go. Oh, you got an Insta 360. Awesome, yeah. man. Cool. Do you have a channel? Uh, I'm trying. To You're working on the channel. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I haven't gotten all the gear to like record the audio and all that stuff. yeah and oh, these post whatever i do on instagram right and the cameras don't make it easy to get audio into them if they would just put 
a Bluetooth interface for audio, you could go right off of the, you know, the Cardos or something like that, but none of them do it. I don't know why. So, cool. All right. So Frank's going to let me uh, roll around on his uh, XR150L here. I let him take the, the Riker out a few minutes ago. He rat raced it around. He's like, yeah, that's different. <laughs> different. That's one word for it. So, yeah, cool. Okay, start run. Wow, that's it. That's it. It's running. I was waiting for it to keep spinning over. It's like, is it, is it running yet? I don't know. I don't even feel any vibration from this thing. This is cool. It feels very similar, even sounds similar to uh, my uh, CRF 150. Clutch is really light on it. That's crazy. Ooh, brakes are good. I like the front brake on this thing. Man, that's good. The front brake on it is much better than my uh, my XT250. That's the one thing I've never liked about the XT is the brakes on it are just garbage. I mean, they stop you okay, but you got to grab four fingers, a thumb, and a prayer to get stopped on that thing sometimes. Yeah, I'm going to have to pick one of these up. Handlebars are low, so I'd have to put some risers on it for stand-up riding. Yeah, it feels just like my XR or my uh, CRF 150. CRF 150's got more girt because it's got a huge rear sprocket on it. It's set up for off-road, obviously. Yeah, this will be fun. I have to ask him how it does at highway speeds. I know they're not really highway machines, but... Yeah, it's very lightweight. Flickable because of that uh, small-ish front tire. 19-inch, I think. 18 or 19 front. I think it's a 19. It's got sufficient grunt. I like it. I'm going to have to get one. I was going to get one of the first ones, uh, you know, July when they first came out, but... Uh, or June, whatever it was, but it's uh, it was cannonball time. Oh man, I like this. I knew I'd like it. I really like it. It's fun. So I have to be honest, between this and like the Trail 125, I, I, I gotta say this is gonna be a lot more practical, more uh, capable than the uh, trail i do like my trail i always have but uh it's got just enough shortcomings as far as gearing and all that that uh it's just not as capable as i had hoped and it really boils down to the fact that it doesn't have uh that high low gear range if it had the high low gearing it would have just been perfect yeah but this is good fun man i like this lightweight I don't know how much different or better it's going to be compared to the XT250, aside from the brakes that I already mentioned. The brakes are great on this thing. Um, but uh, size and weight-wise, it's almost identical to the XT. Uh, my XT has got taller bars. I mean, they probably sit about yay high because it's just different ergonomics on it. And uh, the uh, bar risers that I have on the XT make it a lot taller. But... Uh, you know, the overall feel is about the same. Um, I would say rider triangle is actually more comfortable on this than it is on my XT. The XT has got a very high under cradle to it to give you crazy ground clearance. I think it's like, you know, 10, 10 inches or something like that. 9 or 10 inches. There's a lot of ground clearance under there. But it makes the, uh, the foot peg position a little bit more cramped. Uh, and I noticed for longer rides, the, uh, the XT can kind of get on my knees and my hip flexors a little bit. And I got short legs. Uh, but this is a pretty comfortable riding position right here. I like it. I like it. The placement of the pegs is good. Everything's good. And the seat, I'm surprised, man. This seat feels good, man. I'm stealing your bike, Frank. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, wait. Let's see if it's got the uh, starter kill. It does. Yep, it's got a starter kill. Cool. 
Oh man, I like that. I'm going to have to get one. I have to put one in the stable. Uh, I had planned on getting one anyway because I want to compare it to my XT, which is buried over there. Ignore the mess in the garage, please. Um, I'll get the trail out and let uh, Frank ride my trail around in just a second. Uh, but yeah, uh, just overall capability, uh, I would say that this is probably a win, uh, a better overall machine than the uh, CT125. I hate to say it, you know, for all you uh, trail enthusiasts out there, uh, anybody that's owned one and subsequently sold it, you kind of know what I'm talking about uh, with the uh, shortcomings that it has for highway running and uh, even trail riding, you know, not being able to pop the clutch and stuff like that. It makes it a little bit of a problem. Now, of course, it's fuel injected and uh, it's going to be probably more reliable overall uh, as a ownership and usage uh, case than this but I think the XR is probably the better animal so when I add one of these to the stable in the very near future my plan is to do a three-way comparison between the XT 250 the XR 150L and my CRF 150L uh, uh, you know of course the CRF 150 is a full I need to turn this key off uh, the CRF is a full dirt bike uh, but almost the same identical engine in there so yeah anyway pretty cool I'll drag the trail out and play with it all right I was looking everywhere for the key trying to find it thought crap I left the key at home no the key was in the ignition you dummy um, vroom, eight and a half angry squirrel power yeah. uh, so I'm gonna run him through the controls on it uh, no clutch the clutch is built into the shifter arm itself or the the, the lever so all the way down is neutral and then it's one two three four up so you can either use your toe to lift it or you just push back on your heel and that up shifts so up or back on here to up shift and then to go to lower gears you just go down you can't you can't stall it uh the tricky bit i'll show you we're in neutral so i can do the side stand uh the tricky bit is shifting so when you the, the yeah, you have to roll off the throttle just slightly as you shift, and then when you're going back into gear, as you push, you release slowly, because that is what re-engages the clutch. So if you jerk it quick, uh, like a traditional shifter, it goes, nah, 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 and it kind of lurches around. But, you know, you're not going to hurt it, it just, it feels funny. So, yeah, have fun, run it around. <laughs> There's no clutch. <laughs> You'll do that at least 10 times in the first mile. So down is a neutral. Yeah, that's so one up is, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to get one of these. I like that. I like it a lot. I don't have it yet. Uh, I was going to get the first one, but uh, Cannonball timing was in the way, so I just said, now, nah, wait. Uh, I've seen in some of the other markets, Mexico and, uh, I don't know, not India, but I can't remember where. Uh, they're, they're like just under 3000 like 2875 or something like that. But once you get taxes and fees and everything on there, it's going to be another grand above that. Yeah. Uh, in the other markets, uh, Mexico and some of the other places... I've seen people doing a 21 inch front wheel conversion on it and they get it off of another bike. I'm not sure which other bike. Uh, that way you can get more tire size options because uh, this 19 is apparently not all that popular uh, for front tire sizes. So people are having difficulty finding decent off road rubber. Uh, these are very street oriented tread. It's not really uh, uh, blocky enough, you know, for good off roading. Uh, what I'd like to put are some. Uh, like uh, the what are they the Shinko SR22s or whatever they are uh, on there Golden Boy uh, that type and uh, give it a little bit better off-road capability. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see if they've got the right sizes for that. I think the rear should be easy enough to find. The front is the tricky one. So I might look into doing the 21-inch uh, front wheel conversion. Uh, I don't know if it's retaining the same hub and you just get different spokes and a hoop, or if it's a whole front wheel or what. But I'll find out. Cool bike. I like it. <laughs> there you go. Zoom. It's a fun machine.
I just think that the uh, XR is going to be a more capable machine overall. Ergonomics, load capacity, all that. Hey, he's getting the downshifting. He's got it. Pretty cool. What do you think? <laughs> thing. It's definitely a different riding style than the, uh, oh, yeah. the XRs and all that. Uh... I was commenting riding yours that I think the XR is probably going to be the better overall bike as far as capability, you know, on road, off road, yeah, yeah. because you've got a manual clutch and a little bit more uh, engine power. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, one's yeah. fuel injected, so you know. Nice little, you know. It's a fun, yeah, it's a fun little runaround bike. Trailer in. Right, right. It just doesn't have quite enough highway chops to get to the trailheads to ride long distance. I mean, I've done a, you know, 16 or 1800 mile trip on it, but. Uh, it's really straining to maintain 50 to 55. I mean, that's kind of its upper reach. So, so compare this to the Cub, it's what, it, it has like the same... It, it's the same basic yeah. design. It's almost the exact, exact same engine. But the Cub, because of different gearing and tuning, uh, it's got almost 10 miles an hour top end on this one. So the Cub gets along. I'll, I'll air up the Cub. Uh, the tire's low on it. I'll let you run it around too. It's fun. It's... Uh, Similar, you know, uh, engine feel and everything, but the gears are longer in it, so it, it's better road use. Yeah, All right. So here he's uh, going to take off on his maiden voyage on the Cannonball Cub. So one up. Yeah, I've got that thing pretty far back. You might need to use the heel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might have to learn the heel shift. I told him there's a pretty marked difference in the feel of the bikes. Even though they're very similar, uh, the gears are much longer on the uh, Super Cub. It's much more road focused. Oh, that feels good. Whoo, buddy, let me tell you, it is some kind of hot out here today. The humidity is just through the roof. It's like 85% humidity or something. Ugh, brutal. 92 degrees and that much humidity. It's just gumbo. Houston Swamp Soup. Ugh. <laughs> what do you think? It does have a little bit more pep to it. Yeah. It, it's just, it's like the power is more usable because uh, the gears are longer in it yeah. and it pulls better. It's much better road use, uh, yeah. road bike. Oh, it's nice. I'm like, oh man, this is pretty nice. It's fun. A little bit more agile than that, I felt like. Yeah, yeah, this one, uh, and with the tall tires that I've got on here, it makes it a little bit more sluggish feeling, but yeah, the, the Super Cub is a great road machine. I like taking this thing out on the weekends and just oh, yeah, man. back country roads, back highways out west of Katy and stuff like that. Too, I mean. Yeah, yeah, it's a very comfortable machine. If it just had a tiny bit more horsepower, maybe like two or three more horsepower, and double the gas tank, because it's only got a one-gallon gas tank. Oh, so you can get 115, 120 miles out of that, but you get into some range anxiety when you're out on those country roads and it might be 30 or 40 miles till you find a gas station. So you're like, oh shit, I, yeah. So Neil made this and uh, uh, that's uh, great use of that storage. You know, there's nothing else there. Some people put the little carriers in there and they'll put a little tank bag or something, but having fuel on board is great. Oh yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, before you take off. <laughs> and be looking for the key like I was looking for that one. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah. Yeah, if I wasn't uh, taking this thing to uh, get it appraised today, I'd probably just leave this here and ride that home for the weekend because I haven't had it on the road in, yeah. I don't know, several I weeks. Seen you with, uh, any of these videos on the, uh, I haven't been doing a lot of the Cub videos in a while, but yeah, I still ride it occasionally. I was using it as a commuter for quite a while. Uh, even after the Cannonball, and then uh, I got other bikes, and you know, just kind of didn't really fall out of favor. But uh, my my highway commutes, this one doesn't quite fall in line with that. So, yeah. and it had ABS. I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, it's got front ABS. The uh, trail has front ABS and not rear, as far as I remember. Uh, but it's got disc front and rear, where this has a uh, rear drum. So, yeah. 
Yeah, so your buddy, you were saying, uh, was thinking of getting one, man. You, you guys ought to get some of these. They're just great fun to go out on the weekends. And you just go bash back roads and, you know, anywhere where traffic's not moving real super fast and furious. They're just amazing fun. And they handle so good. You get them in the twisties, these things handle like they're on rails. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. The big 17-inch wheels on there really help. Yeah. But, yeah, no, my buddy, he and I both got an African twin, and, and we're like, well, he was like, look, I think I might get a, might sell a twin, get a cup, uh -huh. and get a used gold one. There you go, there you go. So yeah, like, yeah, touring, yeah. That sounds like a pretty badass idea. <laughs> yeah, the ATs are great, but I'm not tall enough, and I'm not heavy enough to settle the suspension on them. So, you know, that 33 or 34-inch seat is just a little bit too tall for me. Yeah, because even for me, uh, I mean, I could definitely... Tip yeah, tippy-toe, yeah, yeah. But there's those times, especially when you're on the, on, on, uh, in the city. You've got to stop suddenly, and you're not quite where you want to be, and you're hanging off the side of it going, oh, shit, yeah. 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 Being able to get to the ground is so, uh, very important, and a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you just not too Yeah. If you don't ride your bike all the time everywhere, commuting with it, in town, all that, you don't understand the struggles okay. of living with a machine that's that damn tall. And then we both got the DCT, so at least it kind of helps not having to yeah, yeah, yeah. use the clutch all the time. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, it's just yeah. so heavy with a bike. Yeah, it's heavy. And the reality of those adventure bikes these days, yeah, in the right hands, they're world tour capable, yeah, yeah. but they're heavy. And when they go down, they break stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, you know, you're, you're manhandling a 500-plus-pound machine off-road. That is just not cool. Yeah, I, I dropped mine, uh, I think, a few weeks after I bought it. Mm. It came with the um, OEM uh, tanner cases. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it fell and it cracked. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I was like, really? Yeah, and if you if you really have an off, uh, you know, doing two track or single track or whatever, and you dump them, you're gonna break stuff. You're gonna break your rear subframe. You're gonna break your pannier mounts. You're gonna break all kinds of stuff because yeah, they're just so heavy. St that energy has to go oh, somewhere. Yeah, because yeah. it's such top heavy. Yeah, yeah, they're very top heavy machines. Uh, my uh, handguard, it cracked on the side that it fell. But like I said, the Panier case. So at that right. point, I got myself um, one of those um, the Pilot uh, was a soft bags. Mm -hmm. Tusk. Mm -hmm. Tusk. Tusk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, it, it's good. It's good. We we did a couple. Of, we did a trip out to Kerrville a couple uh, months ago. Yeah. Uh, we were look. I looked at your video. Oh yeah. Said, okay. Let me see this Twisted Sister. We want to go check it out. Uh, Twisted Sisters is great, man. Oh. It's awesome out there. You got you just don't want to go out there in the heat of the summer. I've yeah. done it a couple times in July, August. It's brutal. Perfect. Um, we right it we went left early, like at seven o'clock, we left the, the Airbnb and we rode around. Yeah. Yeah, by noon you kinda of felt it, but yeah. it wasn't like yeah. Houston. Yeah, it's not as humid. Yeah. It's a little bit more dry out there in the hill country. Uh, but it was fun, man. It was fun. It was, uh, we got one day we got a little bit of rain, so yeah. we definitely be careful because uh, we rode out. Stayed in Kerrville, we rode a couple times to Bandera. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun, man. But definitely not yeah, Vanderpool, Kerrville, all that out there. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Let me, bar uh, let me ride you. Sure. Bike, sure. Yeah, we'll see him and I. Him and I, ever since we got our small bikes, we're like, you know what? I don't think we've used our twin as much as we used to. It's funny. A lot of people, especially experienced riders that have owned a lot of machines, yeah. once you start gravitating back toward the small ones, these are the the gravitational pull is like a black hole. They they just suck you in, and you end up spending so much time on the little bikes because they're unassuming, they're lightweight, they're unintimidating, and they can go anywhere that the bigger bikes go. They just don't get there as fast. Oh, yeah. Relax. Soak in the scenery. What are you in such a hurry for? It's great fun, man. It is. It is, man. It is. So, yeah, like I said, ever since I got the 150, uh, yeah. I went in the storage unit, I take it out. Yeah. Maybe, maybe every weekend, but I try to, like, do a quick weekend ride up to the forest. Yeah. Yeah. Things. Yeah. You just get out and... 6, to be back by 9. And yeah. I try to get away from this nasty heat. But yeah. Yeah. Once I get home and I drop that and pick this one up, I'm like, ah. Oh. Of a small Isn't it great? It's yeah. just easy. It's just easy. You're not wrestling the machine. You're not. Uh, there's not that uh, the temptation or the need to go fast. Yeah. No, no. And and even when you do ring them out, you get that satisfaction of ringing the piss out of it, and you're still not going that fast. Yeah. You know, you're not really endangering yourself. Yeah, what say, uh, <laughs> it's, it's much more fun going fast on a small bike. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, a lot. 
more fun to ride a slow bike fast yeah. than a fast bike slow. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mini motos are where it's at, man. I love them. It is, man. And it's crazy. I'm like, it's great. I love it, man. It's like, like you said, there's times where I'm like, is it on? Yeah. yeah. Well, I know when I started, I was, I'm waiting for vibration. Was, am I, like, no, am I going? Am I going? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I know you talked about maybe having some type of ride or something. Sure. Get cooled down. Yeah, yeah cool. whenever it cools off, I need to I need to corrupt you and your buddy into moto camping. Yeah. yeah. Get out for a, a two day weekend or something like that. And if you don't have all the gear, I've got shit tons well, of gear, I'm man. Slowly buying gear on Amazon when I see them. On yeah, the yeah. Fifty percent off. All right. right, exactly. And I've got enough spare gear to outfit a Boy Scout troop, so uh, I've got all kinds of extra tents and hammocks and you know whatever you guys might not have, you're welcome to borrow out of my inventory. So I just came back from Mexico. He's like, "Yeah, I've got you a hammock." I'm like, "Sweet, then I could probably <laughs> use that." Hell yeah. Like, Where are you gonna fit it? I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine." Yeah, the trick with our you know the southern climate and the humidity and the bugs and everything is you got to have a jungle hammock. You got to have the one with the net, otherwise you get eaten alive. Wake up pepperoni the next morning. So. Cool. Well, I'm gonna shut down the vlog and uh, put the toys away and uh, figure out what's next for the day. Uh, see what they tell you on that, man. It'll be nice to hear that. Yeah. Well, hopefully I get a, a good private buyer. If not, I'll trade it in on something. My original thought was if I get enough trade in for it, I might trade for the ADV 160 scooter and that yeah. plus plus a little bit of money, you know, because yeah, yeah. I mean, the combined total of those would be about 8,500 bucks or something like that. But yeah. Yeah, I saw that you, you kind of fell in love with the Eliminator. Oh, I like that Eliminator, man. I was talking about that on the way here this morning. If I'd been smart, if I'd been thinking, I would have put a $500 deposit on it and just had him hold it and sit on it. Uh, and then... Traded this in for that? Just <laughs> straight across. Here, take this. Give me that bike. We'll just we'll just swap. Uh, but they already sold that Eliminator yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the next day, I think. So, oh, well. Okay. Well, welcome back to the day in progress. <laughs> and Thunder over there. Dumping heavy stuff in a, the dumpster. Uh, yeah, so anyway, we uh, had a fun morning. Frank came by and uh, met us for breakfast, and uh, we came over here to the warehouse and played with the toys over here. I rode his XR150 around uh, you know, a little one mile loop or something like that, just farting around. I love that bike, I've got to get one. Uh, I knew I'd like it, but I really like it. <laughs> Friggin' moto addiction. Uh, I let him ride the Riker and the Super Cub and the Trail Cub, and he thought those were pretty cool. Uh, he's apparently got a bunch of bikes. He's a moto head like I am. Uh, he's got an Africa Twin, a uh, Himalayan, uh, the XR150, and I don't know what else. He said he's got several bikes. So, uh, yeah, I told him uh, have to meet up one of these weekends. Uh, he and his buddy have both got uh, Africa Twin DCTs, and I said, yeah, we've got to go for a, a breakfast run or a little weekend ride or something one of these days and let you guys ride the Rebel DCT because you already know that motor and that powertrain feel. It might be interesting to to feel it on a different chassis, you know. Uh, I don't think I'll ride their Africa Twins though because they're a little tall for me. I've ridden them before. It's okay, but uh, I'm really tippy-toeing that thing. Just a little too tall for me. I'm hoping that the Transalp makes it to the United States. We'll find out. I think they filed the patents, but I haven't heard any news on uh, potential or prospective release dates or anything like that. So, yeah. Good luck. Hold your breath. Try not to pass out. So, if the Transalp makes it here to the States, hopefully its seat height is a little bit lower or maybe narrower to let vertically challenged people like myself get to the ground. I've got a 30-inch inseam and... And we got a 34 inch seat that doesn't work out too well and as i've said you know i'm not very heavy so i'm not uh, i don't have enough mass to settle that suspension squat the suspension down if you're a little heavier uh you know you get those taller seat heights usually a two almost three inch seat height discrepancy between the seat height and your inseam uh, isn't that big a deal if you're heavy enough to squat the suspension because then it's going to shrink an inch or two anyway but if you're already just kind of right on the edge there and you're not heavy enough uh, it's just very uncomfortable to ride those things in town because you got to get your feet to the ground quickly and unexpectedly and it's not always planned you know 
sudden stops or one thing or another just you know not navigating uh, the crown in the road that you didn't expect that kind of thing so it can be challenging and i've dealt with it all my life with all the big bikes that i've owned and you know big everything from you know adventure bikes to touring machines you know my gold wings and uh Kawasaki Concours and Voyagers and all the big bikes that I had those things are you know right around a 30 31 inch seat as well but they're very wide they're extremely wide so that leg bow getting your feet down to the ground is a trick so I always had to have the seats sculpted out a little bit for me uh, in the case of the gold wings uh, you could lower the air pressure in the rear shocks a little bit squat them down uh, the bigger bikes sport bike stuff like that over the years I've always put in uh, different uh, dog bones the rear suspension link to shorten them a bit and drop the forks and the triple clamps you know half an inch inch something like that just to give me a tiny bit more uh, purchase to the ground it always helped but with adventure bikes when you do that They've already got such long throw suspension and if you're artificially shortening the suspension if you don't also shorten the uh, bump stops or the you know collars inside the suspension you end up bottoming out your your uh, chassis uh, or grounding out stuff you didn't anticipate because the suspension still has the same stroke it had before you just placed the bike lower on it not always a good idea So I'll head out to Katy. Uh, I might just go over there to that iron supply. I've been interested in stopping by there. I've threatened it many times, so I'll just go out there and do it. I'll roll by there, ask them if they're taking trade-ins, have them look at this, see what they think, and uh, get a quick verbal estimate if they're able to do that. Uh, and then after that, ouchie, three of them peeled up. Uh, after that, I will maybe roll by uh, Wild West, just you know, visit them, see what they've got, and uh, head on home, take some pictures of this thing and advertise it. While I'm out that way toward Katy, I can stop by uh, Bucky's and top this thing off with some ethanol free put on your signal and everybody nails the gas to try to block you in eat my ass Douchebag. Hillbilly to cruise. Engage. Left, left, right, left, right, left, right. One hand just barely touching the bars. Left, right, left, right, left, right. It's bump steer. And it just doesn't want to be solved. I'm sure whoever gets this thing from me or buys it from a dealer or whatever, uh, if they dig into that right suspension and just replace both control arms, the ball joints, all the stuff, pretty sure it's the right side. That might cure all the ales on this bike. I just don't want to dump another 2,000 bucks into it. The suspension pieces are 16, 1,700 bucks. And then you can do the labor yourself or pay a shop 1,000 bucks to do it. Not gonna be a cheap fix. Ooh, look at this, left, right, left, right. Barely touching, one hand on the bar. Other people said that it was my windscreen that caused it. You know, oh, you got that big windscreen, so it's pushing the bike around. Hello, no windscreen. It's definitely suspension.
I can never remember how far down it is on 90. So I'm gonna get off at uh, Ken Oak up here. I'm gonna have to stop and throw it into my uh, phone for Google, figure out where it is. Backed into a pole. Look at this jack off. Three lanes over. Don't bother planning your exit. So put your signal on and spray and pray. Good luck. Everyone else has got to make room for you. Figure out where you're going behind me somewhere, jackass. I'll just run the length of 90 right here in this stretch and I'll find that dealer. There's a restaurant over here I was wanting to check out one of these days. It won't be today because I'm not that hungry yet, but uh, I remember passing by there was a restaurant kind of in this area. Uh, that had motorcycles sitting out front. I was like, oh man, I'd have never even realized that was a, a restaurant had I not looked over and seen the bikes sitting out front of it. I don't think this is it, but it might be. Can't recall. That looks like a feed and tax store. Holy shit, it's hot. Oh. Another jack off turning from the wrong lane. Ah. Cherry block, whatever that is. There it is, Texas Tradition. That was the place. I have to stop by there. Burgers and steaks and I told Frank I'd give him a buzz uh text or whatever. Uh, on mornings that I'm going out to do breakfast meets on the bikes and stuff like that. Let's see if he and uh, his buddy want to join in. I might end up out here at Snappy's tomorrow. I haven't been to Snappy's in a while. I like their uh, breakfast. You gotta be hungry though. Whew, man, plate's full, huge. But uh, one of their omelets and biscuits and gravy sound real good. Haven't had that in a while. Greek omelets, excellent. I think they call it the Greek answer or something like that. <laughs> it's the answer, all right. Ooh, fuck, it's hot. God damn. It's so humid today, man. It's so thick out here. Just, it's heavy. I've no idea what the relative humidity is right now, but it's got to be just, ugh. 80% or better. It's so unbelievably thick. It's like, it's laborsome to breathe it, uh, like sucking in fluid. <sighs> I've forgotten how hot the left side of the Riker gets. The exhaust manifold's right there, close to your left foot. So when you're sitting still and the uh, cooling fans kick on, it blows all that heat from the radiator and the exhaust right onto your foot. Your left foot cooks. 
Snappy's Cafe and Grill. They're packed. Oh, doing good business today. Alright, so as I recall, this uh, dealer, Iron Supply, is up here about a mile on the left, I think. Maybe not quite a mile. I usually end up passing it and then have to turn back. But I've never actually... Here it is, right here. Not even a mile. Yeah, see? I always pass it and then have to turn around. I've been by here many times, but I've never actually been in. Alright, so here we are. Ugh. Yeehaw. Triumph of Texas. Cool. Iron Supply Power Sports. Here we are. They got a lot of bikes sitting out front. Electric bikes. Three wheeled uh, wannabe bikes. Cool. Bikes, bikes, bikes. Where am I going to park my bike? Bike. Do, 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 do. I'm going to park it over here. Himalayan. Clunk. The Riker clunk. Okay, cool. Let's go look around. <sighs> Damn, it's hot. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this helmet on. I need the helmet for the camera, but I don't need it for the heat, I'll tell you that. Scram! 411. So yeah, this is what I wanted to come look at. It still looks like a Himalayan, but it's minus all the uh, the add-on. Now, you guys tell me, does that look like an afterthought to you? It just, it doesn't blend with the bike. I don't know. Something about the aesthetics of it I've just never cared for. But these are a different story. It's basically the same, but more naked. I like that. I'm going to have to give that a sit, see what it looks like. Uh, I'd rather get one that's not baking in the sun, but we'll see. Cool. Got electric bikes and Triumph bikes and what do we have here? What do we have here? CF Moto. That's cool looking. Papio. Little Grom clone, but that's kind of cool. I have never seen that. CF Moto. I didn't know they had CF Moto here, but that's interesting. With the Interceptor 650. Oh, God, I like that. That's, ooh, this is slick looking. Oh, that is so good looking, man. I like that. I hope they've got one of the uh, Hunter 350s here. I'm going to go digging around, and then I'll uh, put the helmet back on. But I don't want to leave it on right now, because I'm starting to uh, uh, seriously get dizzy. It's so hot out here. So crazy hot. RE. That's the classic 350. Hunter, here it is. Hunter 350. I don't like the white so much, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a sit. And they got a couple of scooters back here in the back. No, that's a bike. Uh, I'm gonna take this off and go looking. It's hot. Oh well, I'll take you inside. Then I'll turn this off because the camera's just about to shut down anyway. It's uh, it's too hot. Oh lord, it's hot. Howdy. I'm shopping. All right, I've been in here. Uh, monopolizing the sales guy's time. Uh, he actually uh, was over at uh, Wild West for 14 years. I thought he looked familiar. Uh, <laughs> I knew him from over there. Uh, look at this, man. This is the one that I like right here. I really like the silver and light, uh, whatever that lime green, whatever color that is. I like this. This is really good looking to me, and that is even better looking. $39.99 for a brand new 350. That's just awesome. Uh, the 23s don't have the... A uh, little navigation thing as standard equipment. Now it's an option uh, for the 22s. I think it was standard, uh, but 23 it's a it's an add-on. But this bike is really light. I like this, man. I might just have to get this. I mean, I could put it on a credit card right now. <laughs> I shouldn't. I'm trying to temper that urge. 39.99 under four grand for a brand new bike. And from what I understand, this motor is just a peach. Real smooth, not terribly powerful or anything, but very efficient, fuel injected, smooth. I like it. Uh, and then the other bike that I want, uh, that I've been looking at for quite a while, and this is exactly the one I want, the yellow and silver, Scram 411. 
it's arguably more machine it's a it's a bigger physically uh, larger machine bigger engine uh, but just as uh, nimble and lightweight feeling slightly taller seat get it out of here so I don't hit that bike and uh, very good seating position it's essentially the Himalayan but the the ergonomics feel different the seat feels better to me uh, it doesn't have all that crap up here in the front uh, it's a 19 inch front wheel instead of a 21 and a few hundred bucks less than Himalayan 50.99 so $5,100 versus 39.99 so what $1,100 difference uh, 1200 bucks difference I want both of them I don't know which one I would prefer I would have to test ride to know a little bit of slack on that clutch needs taken up, but yeah, I mean, this just feels awesome. Oh, and this does have the little tripper. Uh, I think they call it the Royal Enfield Tripper or whatever. It's a little turn-by-turn -turn navigation system, Bluetooth to your phone, so. Is that off? Yeah, that's just needing to be readjusted. It's tilted too far this way, so that's got to roll down. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to not get another bike. Why am I here? because I'm going to be tempted and I'm going to get another bike. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to walk you around the showroom for a minute. Uh, this is this place is one of those optical illusions. It's much larger inside than it appears to be outside. So you got one section of showroom here. Uh, I'll take you around there show you that stuff in a minute. Uh, but then you've got this entire other section over here. Parts, service uh, area. Got a sofa and a table and lounge and you got uh, motocross gear and all kinds of stuff in here. You got little bikes, big bikes, uh, all kinds of accessories, helmets, riding gear. You got bikes, bikes, gas, gas. You got a lot of the CF Moto stuff, and I'm going to have to get out of this room because there's music. I got to talk over it, blah, blah, blah. We got adventure bikes, CF Moto, CF Moto, CF Moto, Suzuki, and a couple more things around the corner over there. I'm trying to evade the music. Pardon me, pardon me. Got to get rid of the music. <laughs> Might have to cut that whole section. YouTube is pretty evil when it comes to uh, copyright strikes. So, yeah, anyway, neat place. Now, apparently, they're not going to be here too much longer. Uh, they're moving to a much larger store over near uh, Bucky's. Uh, just down the street from here a couple miles and they will be selling another bike brand there that I won't mention because they're not allowed to sell them here until they move into that new location oh nice 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 look at that oh that's a good looking light triumph Ooh. oh, oh. <gasps> she's so sexy looks like a hardtail but it's not there's your uh, monoshock in the back oh man that is cool me likey. Not much of a touring bike. You're not strapping bags on this bad boy. There's nowhere to put them. Thirteen oh ninety five for a twenty three Bonneville Bobber. Ooh, she pretty. She real pretty. Oh, that feels interesting. The seat sucks. Oh, the seat's absolutely horrible. The ergonomics feel good. I like the ergonomics. I don't like that seat at all. The seat is very hard on the edges right here. Not comfy, not for my frame. Looks good though. And then of course, you know, the rocket. If you get deep pockets and uh, enough uh, gonads to handle this thing going down the road. Rocket 3R, 23,000. Hmm, tasty. I think I'd rather get a Diablo than that, but, you know, I'm not into those kind of bikes anymore. Here's a little Trident. I was looking at these a while back. I never did get my money back from that one dealer that stole, what was it, 4000 bucks? can't remember how much I gave them for a deposit on the new uh, RS660. I never got it. Uh, Aprilia. But I was looking at these as a potential alternative. I do like this Trident. It's a nice little bike. They don't have a, a sticker on it price-wise. Oof, I like it. I like them all. Still have a big enough garage to hold everything. More Triumphs. Hmm. Nice. Too tall for me. Fun, but too tall. That's good looking. Ooh, me likey. Bonneville Speedmaster. 
13.5. It's not a bad price. Is that seat any more comfortable? Ooh, it actually looks fairly okay. Ooh, that feels pretty good. I don't think I like the bend of the bars. I would prefer a little bit more straight bar on this because they're too pinched in this way. It needs to come out a few degrees, but you know, you'd always put different bars on it. Feels good. Shiny polished tank. It's so pretty. 3D, hello. Nice. I've never owned a Triumph, and uh, I've never owned any of the Royal Enfield, so I don't know. Royal Enfield are more in my impulse purchase buying range than those are. <laughs> Just because of the price tag. I like this. Man, If I, which one should I get, everybody? Should it be the, the Hunter 350 or the Scram 411? This? Or this? I don't know. That one looks pretty good, too. The black. Hmm. No. I think it would be the, the silver one over there. Or this guy. I don't know. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? They did an appraisal on the Riker, but I haven't heard the numbers yet, so I'm going to find out. All right. So I spent uh, an hour or so here just slobbering over bikes. Uh, they did a, an appraisal on the Riker, and they're telling me the same money that uh, Wild West uh, is offering is 6000 So, uh, I don't know. I'm going to try to do private party sale, uh, but if uh, that doesn't work, then I'll trade it in on something. And it's, I think I'm going to get uh, a little Royal Enfield Hunter 350. I really like this little bike. I don't know. Something about it. It's just standard. Reminds me of the old 70s, 80s uh, UJM bikes. Uh, so the real question is which color so there's the white one I'm not real keen on the stuff on the tank here it says ride pure one side says ride the other side says pure but the white doesn't look too bad I'm not keen on the wording but that looks good uh, then there's the silver one inside uh, that's the same price the $39.99 and then there's the upcharge one with the fancier paint that's black uh, and it's $40.99 or $41.99 uh, I think that black is going to be very dirty and uh, scratch prone on top, so that's the reason that I'm not real keen on it. So I think really for me the choice is going to be between the uh, white one or the uh, silver one in there. So I don't know. What do you guys think? White or silver? White or silver? One of them is coming home with me. Not today, but very, very soon. Anyway, I'm going to hit the road. It's hot as hell. It's over 100 degrees out here already. And uh, get back home and start working on uh, uh, taking pictures of this thing and listing it for sale and all that. See what else I can accomplish on the uh, video editing front. Maybe put this vlog out today, Saturday. We'll see. It's hot. Yeah, they were telling me that, you know, any of the touring accessories, the add-ons, even the passenger seat, all that stuff, uh, you, you lose money on that because they're just giving you blue book, or not even blue book, it's uh, uh, trade-in value on the, uh, ooh, that was rough, he hit something, uh, trade-in value on the bike itself, no accessories uh, are factored into that, so the only way that you're going to get uh, any money out of the add-ons, you know, <laughs> Whether it's performance or functional, uh, is private party sale. So, anyway, kind of what I expected. I was just hoping I could get another few hundred. If I could get 7,000 trade in at a dealer, then done. I would do it today. But another thousand bucks off of, uh, you know, uh, what I should be able to sell it for, that just kind of hurts. And obviously the performance suspension and all that, I'm gonna have to pull that off, put the factory stuff back on it, which takes a little time. Front shocks are easy. They can be done in just a few minutes. Rear shocks are a pain in the butt because you gotta pull the exhaust and jack it up and work in there from the backside and everything to get the, uh, the pivot bolt out and all that stuff. So it's a couple hour job. But I can swap the suspension back, uh, sell that off for a decent price I would think. Uh, I don't think I want to do a giveaway on that on the channel. It's a pretty pricey suspension. Even used I should be able to get uh, six or seven hundred bucks out of it I would think. Good stuff. Ooh, it's too hot in this helmet. I 
I'm glad I stopped there though. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, Edward, the sales guy. Um, I need to look back at my paperwork, but I think he's the one that I bought my uh, CB500X from there at Wild West back in 2015. Pretty sure he's the guy. Texas tradition. I'm gonna have to come back here and eat. I'm not hungry right now, but burgers and steaks. Hell yeah. Cherry Block, Texas Market. It's a butcher. Okay. Looked like a feed and tax store, but it's a butcher. Interesting. Pretty big place for a butcher shop. It goes way back. It's a very deep building. mall is busy. Water park's busy. I figured they'd be closed because uh, school has started already. But they're open. You see people walking the walking the slides. Just wandering around on a Saturday. Well, this has all developed since the last time I was out here. I rode through here, uh, seems like maybe a year ago, and this was all just field, so it's been built out rather quickly. Looks like it's gonna be little office type buildings, but stick frame construction, that's interesting. A lot of these, uh, you know, when they build this stuff out here, it's uh, tilt wall, concrete tilt wall, not uh, not stick frame. It's been a while since I've been out here. This intersection has been drastically improved, and that going that way didn't used to be there. Oh man, I'm gonna have to come over here on one of the uh, mini motos and go exploring, go through the uh, road closed area. Yeah, oh, that's new bridges and everything, huh? Bring the trail over here and go exploring.